We have to do here age a fresh factory. It's a freelancing business. It's a great service for entrepreneurs and business people that need special skills, need to fill out their team and are having a difficult time doing full-time, or maybe they don't want full-time that they're looking to outsourcing. Uh, here it does something at a much deeper level. And that's why I think you're going to find our conversation really interesting and that she can really help deliver what you're looking for and the way she does it, you'll see. Kira, yeah. could you just start off though no. first with a little bit of your life journey and then what got you to Fresh Factory and how it's rolling and how it works? Thanks. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. I have to say that first. Hi, thank you so much for having me. My journey. And I was bored, no. Yes, I was bored. And then all the other sundry things happened. But I have always been participating in business from before even time for legal work. I was the kid who sold candy from out of my locker. I even did that so much to the point where my junior high school actually was just like, okay, what do we need to do to get you to cooperate? I'm like, why do you guys not have something here for the students? It doesn't make any sense. I'm selling the candy because you don't have anything for us. So we took spring break. And when we came back from spring break, they had actually turned a janitor's closet into a school store and made me the manager. I've been managing stuff, you know, managing people and staff ever since I can remember. Even when I was a little bit older than that, there was a lady I went shopping with my parents one day. And there was a lady who was like at a, like a, I don't know what to call it, like a shopping bazaar. And sure. my parents used to ask me, how much is this with tax? And I would tell them just out of my head, Dude, I'd be like this much. So they'd be like, okay, what is our tally? And the lady who owned the shop, she was like, I don't know how old this kid is, but can she work here? And it's been like that ever since. So when I grew up, I was in the military again. Managing people, different personalities, the whole nine. I think what you find out is that as much as you are raised in a certain area and people may have like, maybe it's an industry town and everyone does this specific job. They work for this company. Once you start spreading yourself out, you just get a chance to see that there's so much out there and there's lots of jobs and there's lots of people's backgrounds that may be really similar to yours, even though it doesn't seem like that on the surface. And every town is the same town. It's just on a different location. It's all those things. So I went into, I've worked in government. Uh, I did the census a couple of times, but I have always had this knack for dealing with people and to understand what their strengths are versus, I won't even call them weaknesses, but I just have a good understanding about people. And I don't think that when people are dealing with me, they feel like they are being judged. So I think that's what has always ultimately made it easy for me to work in the managerial position. So now First Factory Inc. has been open for, it's been incorporated for a little over 10 years. I started in 2010, and in 2010, I was telling people that there was a remote revolution coming, and people thought I was nuts. I was working with independent artists at the time uh, who wanted to have their clothing brands or their music or whatever. They wanted it further distributed, and I knew that there was the internet that could help make it happen, but people didn't even have a grip of that even in those times in the 2010s or whatever. So just imagine that I've been putting teams together, specialized teams for specific businesses ever since that time remotely. So now having experienced companies that, I don't really know who your, who your viewers are, but I would say especially a lot of boomers have this one issue that needs to be taken care of. They have businesses that they're ready to sell or that they're ready to have their kids have and their kids don't want them. And I have done a lot of work with businesses who have that issue. And 
their kids are just like, oh, I don't want the business because the business is ran X, Y, Z way. So I, I've really spent a lot of time in different types of businesses, helping them solve that problem. How can we digitize this business? How can we make it more streamlined? What team members do we need to have in this business so that either you can retire or sell it or give it to your kid who would actually want it? It's very different, but they all need a team. They all need a team. And as the business owner, you're not expected to know who those team members are. And it's my mission to be that company that can identify who, what, when, where it's needed so that you can go and live your dream, whatever that dream is. This makes a lot of sense of your background. Thank you for the service, of course, in the military, you know, what you did there, stepping up and just doing it. Hopefully they gave you some good benefits along the way. And I'm sure you learned a lot there as well, but you've got a leadership quality about you that you can step in and set up the freelance work in a way where not only is the owner comfortable and you're solving the different types of problems, because obviously there's different things going on in a business. And sometimes it's just, a, there's not a legacy situation that you were talking about just now. That it's more of a, who am I going to hand this off to to keep it going when it is, it's very profitable, but the family's not interested. Now, what am I going to do? So there's those type of problems on top of everything else. But what I get as far as what I can draw from what you've said here that I wanted to share with everyone is you've got this type of leadership thing where you're able to find people. In other words, you're going to step in yourself, make sure you know exactly and find the things that that owner needs, really needs, and be able to find the right person and train them to step in because you've done it yourself and you've been there and you've helped that, helped them in that way. That's great leadership because what you're basically doing is what every owner would love to do and be able to find is someone better than themselves. If you're a restaurant owner and you have to do some of the cooking, certainly you want to be able to step in the clutch, but you definitely want to hire somebody that's better than you because it makes the whole business yes. better. So that's the mentality I see that you're coming from. That's pretty incredible, Kara. Just to be able to draw that, see that. Could you tell us a a, a bit more about bringing it up to 10 years, long time, and now we're here in 2023. What you're delivering to people is that peace of mind of building their business the way where it can actually grow or the baton can be handed off to the right person, whatever the situation is. But could you tell a little bit about how you work with people and uh, how you're able to nail it down where other types of freelancing, you don't really know who they're hiring and you're not, they're just a big company and they're just throwing a body in there. And uh, there's problems with that. You're taking a whole different approach. Uh, Go ahead and talk about that a little bit. I think that would be something great to share. I spent some time reading about you, Mr. Mike, and I saw that you had a lot of information about personality types and these types of things. And those are things that I believe in. I myself am an INFJ. If anybody does any of the personality types, they know what type of person that is. And that means that I can see the big picture. I am very much a person who understands what it should be. And then I can pass the and I can pass the baton because it doesn't make me feel any it doesn't make me feel bad about passing it off to somebody else. Hey, you're excellent at this. Go be great. But I guess there's um, there's a dance with it. It's like being a in a symphony. Probably the orchestra leader can play lots of instruments, but they don't. I'm going to talk to the owner. I'm going to make sure we have a clear understanding because I've had experience in a similar situation before. But it's not as if, not it's not that someone needs to fix every single problem, but let's just hit the high notes and let's find out how deeply you want to get this fixed. And always the business owner is the one who's leading it. Tell me what you want done and we can see exactly who can come in and take care of those things the most efficiently. And one thing about dealing with freelancers opposed to 
traditional employees, not every single time, but in general, I think there's an efficiency with freelancers because they want to get it done so they can either take vacation or go on to the next project. So there's a lot of efficiencies that can be taken off of. You don't have to be so concerned about how things are going to get done because here's the objective. We're going to put someone in place who is for that position, whether we're looking at their personality type, whether we're looking at their experience. A lot of time I'm looking at a person's desire because they are like, I really love doing this. And in my previous job, I wasn't able to. And I'm like, hey, let's see if we can find a position for you. So that doesn't mean that I'm always able to employ people at all times doing the thing that they love. But when there is an opening for it, when someone needs that role to be played on the team, that person is going to come through and they're going to do excellent work every time. It's because that's what they want to do. That's much different than our normal day-to-day activities, unfortunately. Oh, true. Uh, Oh, true. you got a a style of how you go about helping an organization because it's a bit of human psychology. You're reading the personal traits, the personality traits, and you're doing a little bit more of a deep study in human resources to bring in, to, to really find the right person. Because most of these uh, companies are out there for the owner. It's a lot of hit or miss. It just is. And uh, trust is a big thing. And you're right there working with the people personally. So this is, uh, this is a great thing. This is, uh, anyone working with you is going to be pretty lucky (laughs) as far as I look at it. And one more thing, Mr. Mike, is that one more thing, Mr. Mike, sorry. I never send anybody out to work for a business that I've never worked with. I have worked with every single person on a project for my company before I send them out to you. So there's no question of whether or not this person can actually perform. I didn't look at a resume and take a guess. I made sure that they were doing what it is that they say they can do first, and then I sent them to you. So this is... This is incredibly important because what you're doing here is from the owner side of things, you're removing risk. You're taking the risk out of it for the owner and finding the right person because you're stepping in yourself and learning everything, customize it in a way that's so that the person that you ever bring in is going to rock it. They're just going to, they're just going to be able to rock it because you're putting them on the right path and you know who to hire and who to put in that position. That's a very difficult thing. It's a tough nut for owners to, sometimes they have to go through three or four people before they ever find the right, or they're jumping around between services. They're just not finding the answer. Those problems exist. You can waste a lot of time, or you can work with somebody who's high quality and uh, can deliver that high quality to you the first time, every time. That's... uh, that's incredible, Kira. I gotta hand it to you. That's uh, that's a skill that a lot of people don't have, for sure. I get it that you can build a high performance team as well. Not just putting one person in there, but you can actually build a high performance team, a productive team for owners. I can. I actually wrote a book about it. <laughs> called virtual freelance work from home: how to create a high performance team by using. You walk me right into it. That's the thing, because this has been such an anomaly for business owners all this time. There are services that there are thousands and thousands of people that you could choose from. But how do you know what you need? Like, you know, how the business is run. But let's get to the issue. You want it to be run better. So now we need new ideas. We need fresh takes. What are some of the things that we can do to bring it up to improve it? We don't want to, we don't, we're not trying to run it at the same pace or speed or cost or whatever. We are trying to streamline costs. We are trying to be efficient and we are trying to take our revenue higher. Hello. That's the name of the game. That's right. Uh, that's right. Yes. So I don't want to tiptoe around it, but I know what the goal is. So there's no question of of the objective. I'm definitely on on the same page as all the business owners out there. Kira, the way you're going about this, 
at the cost savings to business owners is incredible because if you're actually performing more than one path there of work, you're actually a business consultant of looking at it from consulting uh, what business consultants do. People pay big money to get the kind of information you're doing going in there and doing the work yourself. It's, so there's a little bit of a crossover there because you can bring up those ideas. You're able to deliver a much wider scope of things to really find what the need is, to make sure it's the right thing how it's defined and so effectively grow a business. People are paying tons of money to business consultants to try and find that answer so that they can go to a freelancer, hire somebody to fit in there because now they know the direction they want to go. You're helping them get the direction at the same time, providing the, the people that can actually do the work beyond yourself. So that's, uh, that's amazing. That's a read I get on it anyway. That's, what you're doing. That's pretty amazing. You've got, you have a podcast yourself. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, what, where do. are you taking it next? Uh, I do have a podcast, but you just gave me a light bulb moment, Mr. Mike. Did you know that? I'm like sitting here with this light bulb face because you just said, I never even thought about it like that. Like it is a consultancy, but I'm just consulting them so that they can you know, get per the proper people in place. But I never really thought about it like that. Hey, this is turning out to be a great interview on both sides. <laughs> yes, I do have a podcast. I do have a podcast. Actually, it's being split into two because I noticed that my oh, audience. Yeah, I noticed that my audience is different. So right now I have a podcast called Fresh Factory TV, spelled the way that the company is spelled. But I really feel like the more I have really drilled down, the audience is the company's. Because the companies need to know what what is there to expect. Because sometimes we're talking from a space of maybe we know what a freelancer is. Maybe we know what remote positions do. Maybe X, Y, and Z. I really feel like we have to speak to everyone. We have to no. lay the groundwork. I did that with the book. And I don't think that I gave it any extra thought. It used My book came from a set of guidelines that I used to give my customers. It's just to give them an understanding of what is a freelancer? What, is, what are these things? What is remote work? Where do you find these gig workers? What are all of these things? So I laid the groundwork in it. But I think that after I reviewed this book with people, I understood that those were the same people that were watching the Fresh Factory TV YouTube station. So in saying that, there needs to also be a place for the freelancers. So if we got the companies oh, on see. one side, yeah. So if we got the companies yeah, on one true. side watching, yeah. yeah. So now I've separated it and one side is Fresh Factory TV so that businesses can see. It's called Fresh Factory TV. It's called Fresh Factory. So what we're doing is we're looking fresh, meaning new, factory as in the business. Right. So how do we implement new business trends, tips, efficiency? How do we do that? New business, fresh factory. OK, so we've got this side. But where are we talking to our freelancers about how we want them to conduct business? How I'm going to set these expectations every time I have a conversation with someone. But just to speed it up, how about I just set those expectations on videos as, as someone comes across? They'll be like, oh, I really want to work with them. Oh, look, I know what they are expecting. We know how we they we know how they want their customers treated. We know all of these things. If a person's never been a freelancer and they have these, a lot of people are very experienced. A lot of people have a wealth of knowledge. People who are even retirees who have like just so much to offer don't even know where freelancing is. And I wanted to be able to walk them through, hey, you with all of this great everything to contribute, this is where you should come. If you want to know from step one, all the way to being a contributing member of the freelance team of any company that you desire, here are the steps. So one side is Fresh Factory TV, YouTube, and the other side is freelance, P-H-R-E-L-A-N-C-E, -E, spelled the same way as Fresh Factory TV. So yes, I'm happy to finally get the light bulb moment of, 
what you said today about the consultancy, and then also to be able to offer this information to businesses for complete clarity, right? Because that's what we're after. We don't need yeah. any question yeah. mark. And then also information and step-by-step -step for a person who wants to contribute onto the freelance side, because I think the future is freelance, if you ask me. I think that is the future of employment. It's for you to provide the expertise to the companies that you desire to work with. No more will it be, Dave, of, I hate this company. I hate my boss. These people do not respect me. And then I'm going to sit there and just be uncomfortable. I don't think that can continue. It's not, it, it doesn't bring anybody a benefit. So as we continue to change how we do work, we will also have to change some of the things that we do. And some of the changes might be that we just contribute as freelancers and that now businesses, instead of looking for full-time employees all the time, they too will be looking at freelancers and not as you know, back of the box type of choice, a premier choice of subject matter experts who are overjoyed to bring their benefits of experience and expertise to those companies. This makes a lot of sense, care. Thank you for laying that out like that. That's that that brings it kind of full circle as uh, helping people understand just how important freelancers are now and how they are going to be critical in the future. Years ago, there was a brilliant move in the dealing with inventory where they developed a new kind of inventory management called just in time. So what that did was cut the cost of superfluous inventory sitting there and with businesses going through cycles or they happen to be a seasonal type of business having the ability to have on demand what you need at the right time is really going to flow into the human capital management type of business that you have that you're doing because you understand the human capital side of it and how important it is to owners to find the most effective people and how difficult that is, because you were stepping into so many roles, you've seen so much, your past experience has all added up to your expertise. And as an entrepreneur, once people get a balance and find their balance doing it, work as a freelancer, like call it your own shots, because you can work for who you want, and you will also own your own cash register, commanding more of what you're worth in that sense as well. And then the businesses save on them. They're more effective with their spend. So they can build up the staff Correct. when they really need it. And then they can sometimes things change. And with AI coming along, that whole new industry, because it really is a new industry, kind of like replacing the buggy whip with cars kind of thing. That's the most serious thing that's going on. Freelancers are still going to be critical to businesses as far as how they cycle in and out of the economy, what's going on and how they grow. So if you can run a lean operation, then you're certainly more profitable. But if you can scale from lean and scale up, that's the best of both worlds. Here, uh, what you're offering is seriously that foundational type of thing that every business actually would benefit from. I, I could see that. I want to thank you for the thank time, you. but I had one last question and didn't prepare you for this. And you might have to think a minute. It's okay. okay. No but what I want to ask you is what is it that you love to do outside of work? I love your work, obviously, but are, do you love to go out and go snorkeling or is it hiking or is it old movies or is it just music and going to concerts? What is it that Kira loves to do that helps you build your culture and a love of life? What is, what are those things that you love? I guess sometimes when people have a very unbalanced work-life balance, they just talk about work all the time. So that's good that you said that this was going to be a off-balance question. So I'm ready. I do travel. I have traveled a lot. It's um, a great one. Travel's a yeah. great one. And one thing is that 
I have a dog that I've had for 15 years. He's the best. Yeah. And sometimes I think it's really important to get away from the main thing that you're working so hard on. Because guess what? It doesn't matter what I got going on. I could have the president on the other side of this screen. If it's three o'clock and my dog wants to eat, he's going to let everybody in this country know that it's time for him to eat it. Sometimes that's cool. Sometimes it's cool to just have something else to, you know, take care of and do that kind of thing. Traveling is a thing that I really like to do, but it's always nice to have something to come back home to and ground you. Although I do see the tropical background here. I'm a watery yes. girl, so I, I like beaches. I like places that are warm, not too hot. Not, I don't like the 105. Come on, you understand. The 105 is too much. I, I but, live yeah. It. Yeah, but yes. I actually enjoy the sound of rain and things like that. So all the water things, I don't discriminate. Whatever way the water comes through, rain, hail, beaches, all the same. But thank you very much for that question. Yes. And thank you for the time today to really get to know you, what you do and how you go about business and that you really do put yourself in there first to learn everything, see how the business is working, and then build whatever that business happens to really need to make them more effective, to fill the gaps or the voids of what's going on in their business to help them grow, help them be a lot more successful. Yes. So thank you for the time today. We'll certainly yes. spread the word here about you from from uh, this conversation. It'll, uh, people are going to love this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Mike. I really appreciate it. Bye, everyone.